Hey and welcome to today's episode. Today we will be talking about my CNC controller. This is the outside of my controller. As you can see it's very straightforward. Not too many buttons, just a single on and off switch, which is all I need at the moment. On this side you will see that I have my emergency stop, which is right next to my computer, and a fan. The fan looks a little odd the way I mounted it, but it works fine. And on the other side I have all of my plugins. I have four steppers. The bottom one with the black wire is my Z0. And then on the side you'll see the power cords coming out for the router itself. So this is the inside of my controller. Might look confusing to you if you don't know anything about this, but it's really straightforward. Very easy to put together. Just takes some time to get everything to fit and to line up neatly and to get the right steppers connected to the right ports. So you see up here I have my four Gecko drives. Those are my G203Vs. I have them set for 3.5 amps. You will see that I have all my wires going back behind this aluminum plate. I do not have a heat sink. All I have is a quarter inch aluminum plate where my geckos are mounted to and I have yet to have any overheating problems. I have had my machine running for up to three hours non-stop without any glitches. The cables go around over here and here I have my four pin chassis mounted connectors. I got those off of eBay which the wire is an 18 gauge shielded wire. You'll see down here I have my contactor and if you look closely you'll see that it's actually not wired into anything it's just bridged over right now not being used why am I not using it? As far as I understood, the only reason I needed it was in case of a power outage and my power were to come back on so that my machine wouldn't start running. Well, I have just tested, as I will show, a little clip of what happens when my controller loses power and regains power. I actually get an external emergency trigger in Mac and it won't continue. I don't think I'm going to get into details on where all the wires go, where they lead to, which wire does what. I see that as pretty straightforward from my point of view, but to explain that in this web of wires will be kind of difficult. Um, what I can say is on the bottom of my breakout board here, these are all going straight to the gecko drives. The gecko drives are getting their power from over here which is linked to the power supply over here. The fan that I'm running right now is actually runs off of 120 volts and you get a strong breeze throughout the whole case. I don't have any vents letting air go escape but the few holes that I do have open for example back here where my power cord goes to my router and on this side where the power comes in it seems to be enough. Oftentimes I will have the case open and in case you're wondering because of dust I haven't had any issues really. As you can see it's not really dirty in there. I have not cleaned it out and I have been running my machine like this for a good half year now. Not on a daily basis but when I do run it there's a lot of dust. I don't seem to have issues with it collecting inside of your it's a better outside view of my four axes and my Z0 finder 
You'll see my wires go down into the E-chain, around, come up the carriage, go in between the beams, loop around the E-chain and come back to the stepper on the Z, on the X, and on the A and Y. Connecting the steppers, I also just used the same chassis plugs I have on my controller, which seem to do the job just fine. And basically what that allows me to do is I can take the cables out, or I can take the steppers off without having to do a lot of rewiring, just plug and go. I had made sure that all the steppers are all wired the same so that I can swap the plugs to whichever one I want if I need to.